Hey everyone, this is Jen from overtheedge.blog and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the double fold bias binder attachment to attach bias binding to your quilts or other projects. Now I have a baby lock evolution so my double fold bias binder attachment looks like this. My, this is a 36 millimeter one that I'll be using for this example today. And here's the example of a quilt that I'm working on that I used that attachment for. Um, as you can see on the front side, it looks like I stitched it down with my normal sewing machine, but if I flip it over to the back side, you can see that it is a chain stitch on the back. Um, this, this technique works great. You know, you cut your own bias strips of fabric. I use the continuous bias method. Um, there's lots of different methods out there. I'm not going to talk about that today. You can learn all about that on the internet. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to show you how to do this, make it fast and easy binding for your quilt. So what we need to do is set up our serger. A couple of things. I set up my serger with the needle in the C1 needle position. I know the instructions say to put it in C3, but I had a lot of trouble with my fabric staying where it was supposed to be using the C3 needle. When I moved it over to the C1 needle, I had a lot better results. And this is why I think that it's happening. And you see the underside of the standard presser foot? has this big gap over here. If you use the C1 needle, your bias binding and some of your fabric is over here where that, that big gap is. And I think it causes your fabric to migrate away from the needle a little bit. So when I moved my needle over to the C1 position, I had a lot better results with this attachment. On my machine is the clear foot, so we can see what we're doing. You, know, you can use a standard pressure foot. I believe you can even use the cover stitch foot if you have one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, we'll put the proper foot on the machine and get the machine set up for a chain stitch in the C1 position. I set my stitch length at 3 and my differential at N. My chain needle tension is set at 5 and my chain looper tension is set about in the middle. To place this attachment on my serger, um, you're going to set it on here like this and put the two screws in there. Give me just a minute, I'm going to change my camera angle so you can see this better. All right, I am back with a better cam camera angle. So we're going to go ahead and place the attachment on our machine. I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in loosely here so we can get everything lined up. Now, when I use a C1 needle position, I line this part of my binder attachment up right with that corner of my presser foot. So let's go ahead and get that lined up in position just like that. For this project or for other projects I've done I found that's a pretty good spot. I, I get that needle um, stitching right where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down. Um, depending on what foot you're using you may also have to adjust these two screws here to move this attachment forward or backward just a little bit. You don't want the foot on top of the attachment, but you want the two pretty close together here. All right, so now that we have the attachment on, um, let's go ahead and move into putting our fabric strips in. I'm using the 36 millimeter double fold bias binder by Baby Lock. I cut my strips one and a half inches wide. Um, for binding my quilt, I found that the extra eighth of an inch um, makes the binding work a whole lot better. The instructions say to cut it one and three eighths, but I cut mine one and a half inches. Also, if you'll notice, I um, made my bias binding fabric strip. I actually put my bias binding, rolled it onto an old serger um, thread spool. I believe this was the Guterman Tully Lock type spool, but it works great for holding, holding the bias fabric strips that I made for serging. When I'm serging, I also like to put my spool onto a thread stand. That allows me to basically spool this off really nice and easily while I'm serging. And it helps me keep the fabric flat instead of flopping over or you know getting in my way or flipping away that I don't want it to go. So I already have my bias binder, my double fold bias binder attached to my machine. And I'm going to go ahead and you want to cut the tip of your fabric strip into a point. It makes it feed into the attachment easier. I'm going to go ahead and feed that in. And then I'm going to use my tweezers to help guide it farther into the attachment. 
when it gets about this point, sometimes it wants to get stuck. I'll take and flip that over with my finger. And if it doesn't want to feed real well, then I'll take and go right down here where my tweezers are and give it a little push so you can see it start to come out the end of the attachment. I adjusted my camera a little bit so that you could see this a little better. My presser foot is up. I'm going to grab my presser foot and lift the toe up. And with my left hand and tweezers, I'm going to grab the tip of the fabric that's coming out of the end of the attachment and I'm going to pull it straight back underneath my presser foot. That'll help get it started. Now that I have it fed into the machine, I'm going to take a few turns of the hand wheel. Oh, make sure I put my presser foot down. Take a few turns of the hand wheel and make sure that that bias tape is getting caught in the stitches. Now at this point, you can test it a little bit and if you need to adjust it to get everything to line up where you want it, now would be the time to do that. So I have my quilt here that I'm going to bind. I'm going to go ahead and insert the quilt into the attachment. The edge of the quilt is basted already to help hold all the layers together to make sure that everything is caught in the, the bias binding. As you guide your fabric or your quilt, you want to make sure the edge of it butts up against this part of the attachment. Um, this takes a little practice because you're guiding your project with your left hand and you'll be guiding the biased tape the bias fabric with your right hand just to make sure everything feeds together nicely. I'm going to go ahead and insert my fabric into the attachment to get it started and we're going to go ahead and start to serge. If you notice on the right hand corner of the screen, you see that I'm coming to a seam in my bias fabric. You want to make sure as that seam goes into the attachment that it doesn't flip over. Um, the extra bulk can cause the bias binding to move away from the edge a little bit and sometimes you'll cause a funny lump. So you just want to make sure that that feeds into the attachment smoothly. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of starch on those seams when I'm pressing just to make sure they stay nice and, and flat. You see how it's going off so nice and neatly? And there, look at that. There is the front side of my bias binding. And there is the back side. You can see the chain stitch. Um, this really is, is kind of a cool way to apply bias binding to your projects. I'm going to go ahead and keep serging and I'll be back with you when I get to the end. Okay, I'm getting near the end of my quilt here. I'm just going to keep guiding. Next, I want to guide till the binding goes right off my fabric. You can't turn corners with the bias binder at the attachment, so you need to serge right off the end. And then you'll fold down or cover those corners later. Alright. And look at that. Put a lovely double fold bias tape on the edge of my quilt quickly and easily. The front side you see that there is it looks like just a regular needle stitch from your sewing machine. You flip it over you can see there's a chain stitch on the back. Look how beautiful that is finished and it goes so quick and easy. I want to give this bias binder attachment a little practice. So I cannot wait to finish my watermelon quilt. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about using the double fold bias binder to finish off your projects such as aprons and quilts and 
any projects that have you know, need bias binding, the attachment works best with gentle curves and straight edges. Um, and you, again, you can't turn corners with it, so you really need to use it on ends where you can, like this one, where you can cover it up with another piece or, you know, turn it under and stitch it down. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot. Um, check out my blog at www.overtheedge.blog where I have tutorials and you can see lots of projects and samples of things that I do with this attachment. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.